All right, so in this demonstration, I'm going to show you how to identify whether or not your planets are in the habitable zone for your star. Um, you're going to be using this graph that's in the um, habitable zone graph Google slide manipulative. Everybody has their own copy in Google Classroom. And you're going to be plotting the uh, location, the mass of your star. And then you're going to be plotting the distance location for your planet. Uh, and you're going to be doing one graph for each planet. So your data is in Google Classroom. Uh, it is where your research packet is. So you'll, you'll need that information, the information from your research packet to do this activity. But for my demonstration, I am doing a fictitious exoplanetary system. Um, I made up all the numbers. That way I didn't have to worry about somebody having the same system. So the name of my system is Hawk 62. That's the name of my star. And my planets are Hawk 62b, Hawk 62c, Hawk 62d, and Hawk 62e. Uh, just a little tidbit of information. If you were wondering where I got that name from, Hawk 62, that's a car. And there's a picture of the car below the data table. That is a 1962 Studebaker GT Hawk. So one of my dreams is to have that car eventually. I have two project cars and they have been sitting as project cars for 15 years now. <clears throat> they will probably always be project cars. But anyway, so I'm going to use this data. I've got the mass of my star, 0.25 sun units, and I have the distance that each of my exoplanets are from their star. So, and they're listed there as well. So the first thing you're going to do with your manipulative is add your star math, mass, excuse me, add your star mass to both slides containing the graph. So my star mass, now yours is on your own data table, but my star mass is, is 0.25 sun units. So I'm going to go to that graph and I'm gonna pop in that number right there. Okay, and then there's a second graph. I'm going to do the same thing. Come on. Right there. <clears throat> and then, uh, then the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to, okay, move the red horizontal line to the mass of my star along the Y axis. All right, so this graph is, uh, the scale on the X and Y axis of this graph is different from scales that you probably normally see. Um, this is a logarithmic scale. You're probably used to looking at graphs with a scale that's uniform uh, along the axis. For instance, each, each uh, tick mark would be the same amount of distance, like one astronomical unit. Each tick mark would be one astronomical unit, but that's not the way this one's set up. Uh, each star mass tick mark would be maybe one sun masses, but that's not how this is set up. So let's just look at the, at the scale for a moment. Here we have a star that has one solar mass, and that is actually the mass of the sun. But then the range goes from one to 10. So each tick mark then is one astronomical unit in this section of the graph. So this is one astronomical unit, this is two astronomical units, three astronomical units, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, and 10 at the top. And then this section is every one tenth mass. So this is 0.1 mass of the sun, 0 0.2, 0 0.3, 0 0.4, 0 0.5, 0 0.6, 0 0.7, 0 0.8, 0 0.9, and one. And this is every one one hundredths of the mass of the sun. So this is 0 0.01, 0 0.02, 0 0.03, 0 0.04, 0 0.05, 0 0.06, 0 0.07, 0 0.08, 0 0.09, 0 0.10, 0 0.11, 0 0.12, 0 0.13, 0 0.14,
0 0.05, 0 0.06, 0 0.07, 0 0.08, 0 0.09, and 0.1. So the, um, the range of those masses changes along this graph. Now my star mass is 0.25. So 0.1 is here, this is 0.2, this is 0.3. So 0.25 is right there in the middle. 0 0.1, 0 0.2, 0 0.3, 0 0.25. So I'm gonna take my horizontal line and I'm gonna drag it down to the mass of my sun. Now this Google slide activity, it won't let you it like it'll let you pop in below it it'll let you pop in above it but it won't let me pop it in exactly where i need it to be so i'm going to choose the one that's the closest and put it right there it's not quite at 0.25 that's the best i can do with the limitations of um, google slides all right so that's where my star is and i want to do that also for the other graph just to get it out of the way 0.25, that's as close as it's gonna be. It won't drop down. See if I drop it down, that's way down, it's down there. I'm gonna pop it up one. There, okay. Now back to the directions. Duplicate slide two so that you have one graph slide for each exoplanet in your system. Example, if you have three planets, duplicate the slide three, two times so that you have three slides, one for each planet. All right, so I have four planets. So I need four of these of slide number two. Now on my presentation, it says slide number three, but your presentation will not have this, graph, this chart of information. Um, okay, so I need four of them, so I need to duplicate this three times. Duplicate slide, duplicate slide, duplicate slide. Okay, so I've got four of them. That's what I need, I have four planets. All right, next, to each slide, add a different planet letter and that planet's distance from the star to a slide. All right, so I have a planet B Come on, you might have to hit edit text. B, and I have a planet C, and I have a planet D, and I have a planet E. All right, so that's my planet letters. Now I need my planet distances. So they're in my data table. Planet B is 0.027. And that goes here. Point one two, point oh one two, point one two, excuse me. Now, of course, you're going to go back and forth between uh, this and your other document. It will not be, your data will not be in this. Your data will be in your research packet. Okay, all right, so all the data is in there. So back to our instructions. For each slide, move the red vertical line to the astronomical unit distance that your exoplanet is from its star. 
All right, so my first one was uh, 0.027. So 0.027, now I'm using the bottom scale and you can see it's also logarithmic. So this section here is one astronomical unit, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. And then these are in tens. So this is 20, um, 30, 40, 50, 60, 70, 80, uh, 90, and 100 at the end. Uh, these are in tenths. So that's 0 0.1, 0 0.2, 0 0.3, 0 0.4, 0 0.5, 0 0.6, 0 0.7, 0 0.8, 0 0.9, 1. The reason there's some tick marks missing over here is the divisions are too small at that point to put it in there. Um, this one here is uh, every uh, one hundredth. So 0 0.01, 0 0.02, 0 0.03, 0 0.04, 0 0.05, 0 0.06, 0 0.07, 0 0.08, 0 0.09, 0 0.1 like that. So our first one is 0 0.027. So 0 0.01, 0 0.02, 0 0.03, 0 0.027 is about right there. So I'm going to take my vertical line, I'm going to drag it over to that location. Okay. I don't know if I can get it closer to that. Maybe not. Again, we've got limitations with this there, with Google Slides. Okay, my next one is 0.12. So 0.1 is there, 0.2 is there, so 0.12 is about right there. So I'm going to drag this over to that location. Uh, 0.23. So 0.1 is there, 0.2 is there, 0.23 is about there. Right there. And then my last one is 2.5. So there's one, there's 2.5 is there. Now in the classroom, if we were in the classroom, you'd be doing this with uh, a paper version of this. This, in some ways, this is nicer um, because um, I don't know. I think it's just easier. But anyway, um, that in the classroom you'd be using a paper graph and a ruler and all that and drawing lines and stuff like that. So um, what this means is this line here is it represents the mass of the star. <coughs> um, <clears throat> So this would be, this, this represents the mass of the star, this whole line. And then where the vertical line crosses that horizontal line, that's where your planet is. So there's a planet there. There's a planet there along this line. This is the orbit. Rep, kind of represents the orbit. There's a planet there and there's a planet there. Now, this one up here is the sun. This is the sun, the one line, and all of these are the planets of the solar system. So this is Mercury, Venus, Earth, Mars, Jupiter, Saturn, Uranus, Neptune, Pluto. So, and this line, this band, represents the habitable zone for the star. So the sun's habitable zone is right here. The star that I've plotted, its habitable zone is right here, where the red line, the horizontal red line crosses this habitable zone right here. So if we're going to analyze the planets for their location in the habitable zone, my planet B is not in the habitable zone. The star is over here. This planet is close to, this planet is close to the star. So, and you can compare that to our solar system. There's Mercury. So this first planet in my system is much closer to its star than Mercury is. It's too hot. All right, the next one is exactly in the habitable zone, right there. And notice that for this star, which is actually much smaller than the sun, the habitable zone is closer to the star. So you get Earth here is the planet that's in the habitable zone for our system 
and it's much further away from the star. All right, the next planet is <coughs> is not in a habitable zone, and this planet is in a colder region, so it's further away from its star than the habitable zone. That would be kind of like Mars or Jupiter for our system. And then my last planet is definitely outside of the habitable zone. Uh, in relation to the distance from the habitable zone, it's more like Uranus and Neptune for our system, even though it's at close to the same place that uh, Mars is for our system. Okay, so what I have is I have one planet that's too hot, and I have one planet that's just right, and I have two planets that are too cold for life as we know it here on Earth. All right, so what are you going to do with that information? What you're going to do is you're going to go and, and open the second document right here. <clears throat> and you're going to use that information to complete part one of this activity. So which planets, if any, are in the habitable zone? I'm going to add, I'm going to add my planet C right there. Planet C. That's all I'm going to write there. Planet C. Which planets, if any, are too hot because they are located in front of the habitable zone? So for my system, it's this one, planet B. So that's what I'm going to write there, planet B. Of course, your answers might be completely different. You might have no planets in a habitable zone. You might have no planets that are too hot. You might have no planets that are too cold. So some of those sections might be blank. All right, which planets are too cold? I have two. I have this one, planet D, and I have this one, planet E. So that's what I'm going to type in there, planets D and E, okay? Your answers will be different than my answers because you have, everybody's doing different systems. Your answers are gonna be different from your classmates' answers because you all have different systems. All right, the next part is, which planets are tidally locked and which planets are not tidally locked? Okay, so um, that information is also on these graphs. So this is the tidal lock line right here. So we learned tidal lock back in the last unit. So as a reminder, the moon is tidally locked to the earth. The same side of the moon always faces the Earth. Now, if Earth was a star and the moon was a planet, that means the side of the moon facing the star, Earth, in that case, would be extremely hot. And the other side, which never faces the Earth or our imaginary star, would be extremely cold. So a planet that's tidally locked would be... Um, it would be difficult for life as we know it to exist there because one side of the planet would be extremely hot all the time and the other side of the planet would be extremely cold all the time. Now, our solar system has two planets that are partially tidally locked. One is Mercury. See how close Mercury is to the tidal lock line? It is partially tidally locked. Venus is also partially tidally locked. Even though it's further from the line, Venus is actually upside down, so scientists think that it was probably hit when it formed, and that's probably why it's upside down. And that whole event may have caused the planet to rotate very slowly. Um, it's rotating backwards compared to the others. So even though it's tidally locked, that whole scenario explains why, even though it's tidally locked, it's outside of the tidal lock radius. But let's look, take a look at my planets. If the planet is between this tidal lock line and the star, it's tidally locked. So, and if the planet is out here beyond this tidal lock line, it is not tidally locked or most likely not tidally locked. So my planet B is tidally locked. My planet C is tidally locked. It's in the habitable zone and it's tidally locked. My planet D 
whoops, my planet D is also tidally locked. It's between this line. So C, B, and D are tidally locked. This one, planet E, is not tidally locked because it's beyond this line. So I need to record all that information here too. So which planets are tidally locked? I will type planets B, C, and D. Which planets are not tidally locked? I will type planet E. And then look up the definition of tidally locked. All right, and then you make an analysis. Based on your answers above, which planet do you think is most likely, the most likely planet to be habitable? And you choose from your planets. Do not go to the internet and look up the answer because that's not the purpose of this activity. The purpose of this activity is for you to analyze your planets based on these two criteria, where they are with reference to the habitable zone and whether or not they are tidally locked. And then why you chose them. You should state something about the habitable zone locations and the tidal lock. Okay, so that is what you are doing today. If you get that done and you have more time, you are welcome to go on to part two, but I am not explaining that till Monday. So you, that is not part of what you need to do today. Okay, so at this point, are there any questions about that process? Nothing's appearing in the chat. I don't see anybody unmuting, so I'm going to say you have no questions. As always, I will be here in the Zoom till the end of the block. If you do happen to come into the block and I'm not here, that means it timed out at 40 minutes. I'll be entering, I'll be opening it back up, so just try again. All right, guys, you have a good weekend and um, good luck finding your habitable planets. Have a, have a good day, guys.